Hey guys, welcome to my theater vlog. Just got out of seeing the new play Death Rattle at the Gooseberry, starring Cobro himself, Ben Glenroy. This was just a preview. The review is under embargo until it opens, but I can say this. This play is crazy. There's a murder where the only suspect is a baby. I know what you're thinking. Is Ben Glenroy the baby's father? No, but according to Wikipedia, Ben Glenroy was born in 1973, so he's 50. He could have had a kid when he was 20, and that kid would be close to 30. Does Ben have a child? The best part of the play was a monologue from the nanny character. New actress, I've never heard of her. The character says that as a parental figure, she would kill for a child in her care. Are there any parental figures who would be a killer in the play? Parent and child? Or maybe a parental figure who's a distant relative, like an aunt? Well, I can't say, but at least this thing wasn't a musical. Let's solve Only Murders in the Building. Season 3, Episode 2, The Beat Goes On. Mabel, Oliver, and Charles attend Ben's lavish memorial full of fans and those with more dubious motives. As the actor's sudden death is mourned, Oliver works to revive his shaky Broadway show. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on the hunt to learn who killed Ben Glenroy. And at the very end of this podcast, we're going to talk some spoilers. They are light spoilers about celebrity cameos in this season. Again, it's at the very end, but it does tie into a theory about the possible killer. Spoilers all the way up through Season 3, Episode 2 of Only Murders in the Building. If you haven't seen all 22 episodes, pause this video, convince somebody to subscribe to Paramount Plus because of their great shows like, uh, watch all those, then come back and watch this video. Use the timestamps below to jump to the topic or suspect you want and skip past the stuff you don't want to hear. Let's begin by looking at the double C credit clues. At the top of the Arconia across the skyline, we see gas lamps. It's like the whole city is a sous chef. If you have friends who like only murders in the building, please, please, please share our videos with your Arconiac friends. Tell the world about our Let's Solve community. Before we run down the suspects, let's see what episode two taught us about the victim, actor Ben Glenroy. Now Ben fell down the elevator shaft and he fell through the caution tape that was preventing people from going into the elevator. He had one of his death rattle handkerchiefs in his hand. Now this was a gift, these handkerchiefs, which Ben gave out and he left a note with each gift. Is Ben Glenroy the type of person who would write that note or would it have been his brother assistant, Dickie? Ben was born in 1973 or 11 years after Loretta got the theater bug. We find out Ben got a series regular part on the TV show Brazos when he was only eight years old. That would have made it 1981. But he was fired because Charles thought he was acting with his hands too much at the table read. A bit like Ben wants to fire Loretta after her bad table read for Death Rattle. In rehearsals, Ben's performance for Death Rattle was flat. He didn't understand the play. He hated his voice. Ben played the character Bruce in the TV show Girl Cop when he was 31 years old, or 1994. Hey, it's a fun question. Tell us this. Who should star in the movie remake of Girl Cop? Now let's look at the suspects. First up, Loretta Durkin. Loretta looks like this in 1962. Can you imagine in your head this girl 11 years later giving birth to a child? A child named Ben? If not a parent, she could certainly be Ben's aunt. Now look at the refrigerator in the episode one flashback. You have to brighten the image. It's out of focus, but it certainly appears to be a note on her refrigerator that reads, Merry Christmas, Aunt Loretta. Loretta is Ben and Dickie's aunt, right? The parental figure, not a parent, but a parental figure who would kill, like the play Death Rattle? Would an aunt kill a nephew? Have we solved? Who killed Ben? Donna, the producer. Donna and her son Cliff are pulling the plug on this play. We got this great feedback from GHDU, who said, Rewatch the ending of season two, episode 10. Donna calls Oliver, and Oliver says to her, Yes, I do actually owe you a lot of money. Hmm. This could tie into the spoiler that we're going to talk about at the very end of this episode of the podcast. 
Taubert. Tobert. Taubert. Boy, this character's name is difficult to say. Now, why are we bringing him up? Because in episode one, someone called a phone that Dickie made Ben take. Tobert was the only character who wasn't at the opening night party. Everybody else wouldn't have called because they were already there. Plus, there's the question of Tobert, why wasn't he there at the after party? He's documenting Ben Glenroy's first play. And then, hey, Ben coming back from the dead, he would want that documented. Where was Tobert? Now, he looks too old. Is there any way that Tobert could be a child of Ben Glenroy? KT, the stage manager. She listens to the producers and not really to director Oliver. Greg with three G's. I'm not even going to make a folder for Greg. Greg is not the killer, okay? Why waste time? It's not him. He's got his female dog, Ben. We love that. Greg, you're not the killer. Bye-bye. Oliver Putnam. Oliver is trying to save his show. When critic Maxine tells him he's got to lay it all on the line, he does after a heart attack. Would Oliver kill to protect Loretta? Because we know Ben didn't like Loretta. Hmm. Charles Hayden Savage. Charles got Ben fired from Brazos. Now that's not a motive to kill Ben, but did Ben retaliate in a way that would make Charles want to kill Ben? Mabel Mora. Mabel is 29. That's tight. She didn't finish college. Tight. When speaking to Ghost Ben, Mabel says that all she can think about is, but she doesn't finish that sentence. Tight. Charles keeps reinforcing that Mabel didn't know Ben. Is Charles correct? Now let's get to your feedback. On YouTube, Tax Blue said, I have been waiting a whole year for your video. Thank you so much. Emily wrote, No idea yet who done it, but I love this show. Glad your recap is back. Thanks, Emily. Adam said, I didn't even know Only Murders was back until I saw your video. Hooray! 6-7-Sun wrote, Still a bit early. I'm not sure all the players are on the board yet. You may be right, but I wonder, after all those new characters in episode one, how many more could we get? M wrote, If Ben had been pronounced dead at the scene, the hospital would not have pumped his stomach. The appropriate question is to ask why Dickie is lying, and to whom. Ezra wrote, One of my predictions is that Ben wasn't killed by the same murderer the second time he died. Next up is Alex, and Alex said, I think Ben was killed by a scorned castmate whom he treated poorly during the production. They attempted to poison him, but it failed. After his return, they confronted him and out of anger threw him down the Arconia elevator shaft. Beggy Mai, hope I'm pronouncing that right, I get weird vibes from Cliff, but I also believe there are two suspects, one who poisoned and one who pushed. Natalie wrote, One theory. Someone put poisoned cookies in Ben's dressing room. And this person may have also stolen mangoes from Ben, so he only had the available snack of poisoned cookies. It's possible that his brother was behind Ben's death. He left the party at the same time as Ben to go upstairs, and Ben did have a tendency to blame his brother for things. Now we kept asking, who is the her that Charles warned Ben to stay away from? Veronica wrote, the her is Jan. And I love that idea, Veronica. Ben wants to get back at Charles. Who would be the best person to get back at him with? Jan. Chris wrote, It's just an initial hunch. I wonder if the reason for someone killing Ben is the same reason Ben had for animosity towards Charles. Was Ben killed because he fired someone when they were pursuing an acting career at a young age? Maybe the theme this year is struggling young actors. Did Ben screw someone over on his way to the top on Girl Cop? Jay wrote, I don't think Ben was poisoned. Mabel said he would have been foaming at the mouth, which Ben wasn't. Kristen wrote, out of curiosity, does anyone know if the actors on Only Murders in the Building, the real actors, know if they are or are not the murderer when the filming begins? Boy, that is a great question. Someone with a great handle, the Chris Hype, wrote, I ran this theory by my wife. What if the twist this season is that there is no killer? What if Ben genuinely did get a horrifically bad food poisoning before the showtime, and then he just fell down the elevator like an absolute idiot? Then Chris writes, come on, let's be honest here. It's Loretta, right? Like you're going to have Meryl Streep on your murder show and not make her the murderer. 
And finally, our friend Peter in Australia said, Boy, it is great to see the Arconia gang back together again. Peter continues, I've seen Cobro 1 and Cobro 2, but Cobro 3 hasn't made it to Australia yet. Has it been held up by the strike, or have they been holding it off for Christmas? Wonderful question, Peter. Okay, let's get to this spoiler about upcoming celebrity cameos in the season. Early reviews said we're going to see Matthew Broderick and Mel Brooks. If you know anything about the theater, how are Matthew Broderick and Mel Brooks tied together? The Producers. Spoiler, if you haven't seen The Producers, which is a great movie, go see The Producers. The Producers was a movie about Broadway producers who try to launch terrible shows because they can make more money on a terrible show. Now, in the movie The Producers, they were doing it by having a lot of people invest more than they needed. And then when the show closed quickly, they got to keep all the money and tell everybody, oh, we just lost it. Are the producers of Death Rattle, Donna and Cliff, pulling a similar scam? What do you guys think? She's a mother. He's a child. Does that fit with the theme of Death Rattle? Are Donna and Cliff the killers? We'll leave you right there. On to episode three. We'll talk to you next time.